What's up y'all? Back here at the crib playing the acoustic and I felt like doing a little lesson about finger stretching. Okay, so we got a couple concepts here today. We're gonna jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our hammer-ons. Okay, if you don't remember what that is, a hammer-on is taking one fret and using basically, you know, partially gravity and a little bit of finger strength to move to a higher note. And a pull off is the opposite. So it's a descending motion. So you play one note, in this case right here, and you'll, you'll flick your finger off to pull off to the next note. So you've got... And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this ascending chromatic scale. We're gonna go down the neck, which is ascending, and then we're gonna go back up the neck, which is descending. So here's what that looks like. I'm in D standard, it's my tuning. Doesn't really matter for y'all, just play anywhere you can. I'm gonna be right here at the third fret, okay? And what it's gonna look like is this. You're gonna go index to ring, and then on the next string, lower, the A string, you're going to go middle finger to pinky. And then you're going to repeat that pattern going down. So check it out. It looks like this. Okay, one more time. And then once you get to the top, you're going to reverse it, okay? So you just did all hammer-ons. Now you're going to do all pull-offs going back up, okay? So check it out. It's going to go like this. And I'm not using... I'm using one finger per fret, okay? So if I'm right here with this finger... Only this finger is hitting these frets. Same thing with this finger, this finger, and this finger, okay? So one more time. And back up. Okay, and you can do that up and down the neck. So you can pick a random fret. down the neck just like that so quick recap hammer on now you're gonna hammer on with the middle finger to the to the pinky and then you're gonna switch back to the index to the ring switch back middle to pinky and then I should explain this a little bit better for um, any beginners watching. So every time you hammer on or pull off, you're moving to the next string down, okay? Or up if you're pulling off. Hammer down every string down and then pull off every fret up, or every string up. So that's the first concept we're gonna do. The next one is a bit of a, a finger stretcher. So the purpose of this, the purpose of stretching your fingers out, it can't be overstated that the more limber your fingers are, the more you're gonna be able to play and you have great coordination going up and down the neck, have no hangups. And that's the thing, you wanna get all the cobwebs out of your ligaments and joints and all that. You want to be able to play as free and loose and agile as you can, okay? So this next exercise is going to be a little bit of a strain for some, but you're, you're going to hold your hand like this, okay? Like, I really don't have an analogy for this. Just hold your fretting hand like this, 
okay? <laughs> and then you're gonna, just like always, pick random fret, okay? I'm gonna do, let's say the fifth fret for me. And you're gonna play the low E first. And then with your ring finger, you're gonna play the A string two frets up, okay? So I'm fifth fret, low E, two frets up on the A string with my ring finger, okay? You following me? And then with my pinky, I'm gonna hit that D string on the ninth fret. So you're doing, it's basically a one, two, three, four, five, it's a five fret span, okay? But you're skipping these two frets, okay? So you're hitting the fifth fret, the seventh fret, and the ninth fret. So it looks like this. Okay? And you're gonna keep that same hand uh, spread, and you're gonna go down the fretboard, okay? So you're gonna go five, low E, seven, A, nine on the D, and then you're gonna go fifth fret on the A, seventh fret on the D, ninth fret on the G, okay? And then you're gonna go um, fifth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, ninth fret on the B. Now when you get to this point, it's gonna sound a little ugly, but we're not going for musicality. We're just going for pure um, exercise, okay? And then after that, you're gonna go fifth fret on the, on the G, seventh fret on the B, ninth fret on the E, okay? So every finger is playing like you're not moving your hand a bunch, okay? Okay. And you can down pick this, but what I really want to stress, and I'll make a, a future lesson on this, is the importance of getting used to alternate picking. And for those that don't know, alternate picking is just picking up and down. Okay. Usually when people start out, it's all down picking. That was me for a while until I learned how to do it. Without getting too much into it, like I said, I'll make a future lesson on alternate picking for beginners. You just want to be able to pick fluidly. So right now, if you can just do down picking, that's cool. I'm going to do alternate right now so you can hear how that sounds. And then I'm going to down pick so you can hear that. Missed the note. But anyway, so when you get to the top, you're going to stop. And then you're going to reverse, okay? So now you're going to go 9th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret. So 9th fret on the E, 7th fret on the B, 5th fret on the G, okay? And then you're going to keep going up. So now you're going to go 9th fret on the B, 7th fret on the G, 5th fret on the D, and then so on and so forth, okay? So now 9th fret on the G, 7th fret on the D, 5th fret on the A, and then 9 on the D string, 7 on the A string, 5 on the low E, okay? So what that all sounds like together, I'm going to try to slow it down for everybody, so... And then A sin. the next concept the last concept we're gonna do oh and by the way just like always move up and down the neck because you want to be able to be comfortable down here doing the same thing see even I mess up so no one's perfect right and the last thing we're gonna do is I don't know if you'd really call it an exercise um, Dave Mustaine coined it, I believe. It's where I learned it from is uh, Dave Mustaine, the singer of Megadeth, and he calls it the spider chord. 
So if you don't know um, <clears throat> what a chord is, a chord usually consists of three or more notes. So technically this is, they call them power chords, but it's kind of a misnomer because a chord is three or more notes. So really it's a, a, a double stop, I guess. Without getting too much into all that, pick, um, I want you to pick two frets that are spaced one fret apart, okay? On the A string and the D string. And I want you to play with your middle finger on the A string. Let's say we'll do the eighth fret. And then your pinky on the tenth fret of the D string. So you got A string, D string, okay? Now what this is gonna look like, it's gonna bounce back and forth, okay? So you're gonna go play both those together. So if you're if you're playing with your thumb, just pick just those two strings, okay? Just those two strings, just that A string and that D string. And then now you're gonna swap your fingers and you're gonna play the E string and the A string, but you're gonna do it on the seventh fret and the ninth fret. So if you were here, let's say, let's say you started on these two frets for your middle and your pinky. Now, since your hand is already right here, switch to the lower strings and use your index and your ring. So you got pressure, squeeze as hard as you can, just like always. You want to get used to being able to have too much pressure. That way, when you're in a live situation, you don't freak out because your hands are, you know, cramping up or whatever. So, see what I'm doing there? A and D string, E and A string. And you can move that everywhere. Okay. By the way, I played all that with my thumb. So you can use your thumb or you can down pick this all with a pick. You can, you know. Obviously the goal is to get to alternate picking, but I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. So now you can also do these on other strings. It's not gonna sound as cool. The higher you get, it's gonna get dissonant, but get used to being mobile on all the strings, okay? So, I'm going to do it up here. Then I'm going to go down. Okay, and then back to... So the importance of all these exercises is not just um, hand coordination, but you also want to strengthen this pinky. Your pinky is going to be your weakest finger. It was mine for forever. I avoided using it a lot when I first started playing. But after doing a lot of these exercises, I you know, grew calluses just like the other fingers, and I was also able to play and reach notes that I couldn't with my ring. I could... I could do a, a, a huge spread if I wanted to. And you want to get to that point as well. The last thing I'm going to show you is not even guitar related. Okay? But it's something you can do wherever you are. Okay, So just grab a flat surface. Flip. You grab a flat surface. Okay, Take your fretting hand. Okay, and It's kind of tricky. But while keeping your whole hand down and all your other fingers down, Try to raise your index and your ring finger together like that. Boom. Boom. And then you're going to switch. You're going to raise just your middle and your pinky. You see that? Oop. See? Boom. Boom. You're going to swap. Okay? See? It's tricky. Your brain is not wanting you to raise that pinky and middle together. 
because it's an unnatural movement. See, I'm I'm messing it up myself. But this is a good exercise, and it also strengthens your wrist. You know, especially this bone right here, your outer bone where your pinky is. You know, it'll get rough. So practice that. If you got some free time, do a bunch of reps of that and stretch you out. That was today's lesson. Y'all get out there and have fun. And check out my other videos. If you want some more content, I'll be posting as often as I'm, you know, able to. So y'all have a good day. Peace.